Shalom, everyone. Today we'll talk about the process of choosing a chazan, a leader for the prayer. And uh, like I said uh, last week, uh, until print was uh, available for everybody, um, usually a synagogue only had one book and it was on parchment. And so the chazan had a lot of work to do because uh, nobody else would have the actual wording of the verses. So um, the Sephardi custom became that they just respond for almost everything. And the Ashkenazim um, instead composed all kinds of tunes. That way people can remember them just like um, today kids learn songs just by listening to them a few times. And, and because either because they rhyme or because they, they make sense, uh, they can remember them much better. So um, the Chazan leads the prayer service. Sometimes the whole congregation says the prayers together with him while he sets the pace. Other times he recites the prayers and the congregation responds Amen, such as in Chazarat Shatz, repetition of the Amida, and the recital of the Kaddish prayers. Hence, the Chazan must be an upright, highly regarded, humble, amiable person who has a pleasant voice and is accustomed to reading the Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim. This is all according to the Gemara and Ta'anit and Shukhan Aruch. Uh, Ta'anit, of course, talks about public fasting days where we sometimes have to even take the Torah out to the street and, and read from it publicly. So it's, it's not only all these other qualifications, but also not only a pleasant voice, but also something that can be heard um, over other noises that might be in the street. So uh, we learned all that with Benedict. Um, and, and I think that, you know, all these qualities are, are good for anybody, but uh, but in the prayer for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, the Chazan before Musaf actually says, uh, may I be uh, accepted by the community, may I have a good voice, may all of my prayers be accepted. Um, and I personally have a custom, even though right now I'm shaven, to uh, grow a beard for, for those prayers because it says us kaname gudal, and the Gemara Tanit also mentions that there and the Mishnah uh, that a person should have children who rely on on, on him, and therefore it, it's more meaningful because if he doesn't have children and he doesn't have a family, uh, then he's just doing a service for the community, but he doesn't feel the need uh, like the other people in the community. So that's basically the introduction. Uh, we must be especially meticulous about this on the high holidays and on fast days when we pray to Hashem and beg Him to forgive us for our sins, save us from our troubles and bring our redemption closer. For if there is fault in the Chazan, the congregation's prayer will not ascend properly. And this comment of the Ramah is basically... Uh, comparing it, I, I didn't think I didn't see it in the source, but he's comparing it to the high priest. The high priest in the second temple, they said that the reason why they had to tie a, a, a rope to the leg of the chaza, of the high priest when he went into the holy of holies was because he might die there because he's not doing things properly, and we're going to have to pull him out because we're not allowed to go into the holy of holies. So, God forbid, we're not talking about such an extreme. Example, but the idea of uh, of the chazan is that that he has that responsibility to to bring our prayer to Hashem in the proper way. Uh, during Chazal's time, it was forbidden to write siddurim because only the written Torah, Rosh Bichtav, was permitted to be written down. Anything that was transmitted by word of mouth, including the prayers and blessings instituted by the chachamim, was forbidden to put into writing. This is according to the Gemara and Tamura. At that time, the Chazan's task was very important because all the prayers had to be recited aloud in order to fulfill the obligation of the congregation. Therefore, the congregation designated one Chazan for this honorable task, and all the laws that apply to appointing the Chazan on fast days also pertained to the regular Chazan. The Chathila, which means the, the basic halacha without um, being lenient, each and every person in the congregation would have to agree to the Chazan's appointment since he fulfilled um, everyone's uh, obligation. And in Hebrew, it's actually called 
um, Shatz, which is Shliach Tzibur, the person who is our Shaliach, our appointee, our um, maybe even deputy, to fulfill our obligation. Again, this is all the Rabbanan, so we're not that stringent. Uh, and the Torah, uh, Torah reading was actually uh, written, so it was easier. And uh, again, to differentiate between the Sephardim and Ashkenazim, a lot of Sephardim, Sephardi Jews, even today, um, if they want to be called up to the Torah, uh, they prepare the Aliyah that they want to be called up to. Uh, and when they get called up, they actually say, they actually are the ones who read the Torah for us. Um, and so we have to trust that they pre prepare it properly and, and stuff like that. Ashkenazim usually don't do that. Um, but in our congregation, uh, there's a person who buys almost every year Naftir Yona on, on Yom Kippur, and so he does it beautifully. The the one year that I remember that um, he wasn't available or didn't have time, um, a person bought it instead, and uh, we had a very monotonous reading without the Tamim, without the tune, and it was very, very disappointing. So... Um, that's why we have to rely on the chazan and, and the reader to, to do it properly. However, today when everyone has a siddur, the chazan's job is less important and selecting a permanent chazan for the whole year is no longer customary. Instead, every day a different person can lead the prayer service. Therefore, we are less meticulous in choosing a chazan. And this is going to be related to the Kaddish because uh, the custom now is that after somebody's parents die as they come to service for 11 months and one day and, and say, and lead us in prayer. So, um, you know, maybe the first two or three weeks, it's not that smooth, but after such practice, it, it gets that way. And uh, one of the things that I learned a long time ago is that um, mitzvah chinuch, the obligation of education, does not include uh, the laws of mourning because we don't want a child to practice mourning um, but unfortunately our history has proven that so many kids have lost their parents at a young age and so um, that's that's what this is basically going to talk about in the last paragraph here uh, even so when appointing Chazanin the Gabayim uh, who are the synagogue coordinators or ushers must try to choose decent people who abide by the Torah and observe the mitzvot they should be people who the congregation agrees to have as its prayer leaders, but the Chazanim are the ones who repeat the Amida and recite the Kaddish prayers on its behalf. Uh, additionally, on Shabbat and festivals, when it is customary that the Chazanim sing and chant part of the prayer service, the Chazanim should be musically gifted with pleasant voices. So I'll just conclude, and tomorrow we'll talk more about the Kaddish. Um, if somebody doesn't really know how to lead the service. And uh, we can say, you know, you'll be the one who says the Kaddish and, and everybody else will be in an undertone. Uh, you're, you're going to be the leader. Kaddish is something that almost everybody learns very quickly. Uh, and so that's a good suggestion. And besides that, um, you know, and, and if you say, you know, I'm ready to lead part of the service, then... There are communities that divide the service in the morning at least to three parts. Uh, Sukkot and Zimra until the end of Az Yashir, and then the blessings of the Shema all the way to the end of Tachnun, and then third part, Ashri and Val Tzion, and the conclusion of the prayer. So that's that's how we solve that problem, basically saying that, you know, you're not ready to do the whole service, and, and, and we're not trying to insult you, but basically learn how to do it and then maybe we'll give you another part next time but but uh but that's how how a lot of communities work that way you know we we can't expect who's going to die and who's going to have to say Kaddish and so uh, and, and we also are forbidden from having fights over this we're not allowed to say you know I come before you uh the, the Ramah gives a very clear list of, of who comes before who uh, you know when Chabad added that somebody has to get an aliyah for their birthday. Of course, if there's three people that need to be called up because they have your site, 
that overrides birthdays. So these are all examples that we're going to discuss because uh, we want our leaders to be uh, appropriate and understanding and Torah observant. Um, and I will conclude with that.